Welcome back to the channel. My name is Denkorn. Today, this is my experience using a Hackintosh on macOS 10.15 Catalina. Now, why Catalina? Well, I want my hardware to be better supported on Catalina as it's older, but it will also work with the hardware I've got, which is just a fourth gen i7 laptop CPU with like eight gigs of RAM, 250 gigs SSD. You, you get the whole point. This is my whole experience using Catalina and mainly Hackintosh in 2023. Um, you'll see a lot of errors and a lot of, um, what's the word? Issues. So I hope you guys enjoy. Let's get started. Okay guys, we're here on macOS. This is my genuine macOS install on, not on native Apple hardware. It is on native hardware though, but just it's not a MacBook or an iMac or any of those. It's on a genuine Windows laptop. The brightness does work. I will have to probably swap my um, screen recording because it's showing up on my other display. But the brightness is working, which is really good. The volume even works as well. Well, it won't work right now, but if I just quickly change my input. Volume works and everything. Now, we're gonna get into the main issues, which one of the issues that I did occur was that the download speed went dramatically like up so this is me trying to download the firmware that i needed f to plug my phone into the hackintosh it just kept going up like the seconds if you notice like 17 minutes 33 and then like yeah you're, you're noticing that uh, that's mainly the internet issue however this is oh, i'm gonna have to admit probably a bit bizarre because i did have the internet connected but it said it, uh, the install failed, which I, I just don't know why it did. What did surprise me was when I, uh, what's it called, looked at my CPU usage like earlier, um, I noticed that the CPU usage was heavily high. Majority of it was from the user, which is me, with 63%. For some reason, the system was barely using anything, but it was using 30% on idle, which is a bit concerning. If I would say so, me, the user, was using majority of the of the CPU. All of the blue, like all of this, was me. I don't, I, I just don't know how that's manageable. That's the thing. Like to think, like to see all of what's the word, like all of this being in a weird like pattern. But most of it, for some reason, came from. Um, what's it called? The disk image mounter, which I don't know how because it wasn't even running at the time. But if I look at the CPU usage now, this is it pretty much now. It's on idle even though I'm screen recording this. We've got the Windows server, the iStat menu service, Discord, QuickTime, the kernel. Yeah, it's not really using that much now, but like we've a browser open, in fact, I've got Chrome open at the moment. I've got Chrome open at the moment, and yet it's not really doing that much to the CPU. Like if you, oh, now it is, because I've got it open. That was ma the main issues. It It's also able to run 1080p YouTube, which somehow my Windows install couldn't even do. Props to Julius Hexpot, by the way, for letting me screenshot the DM and showing you all this. I'll put the link to our channel in the description down below. Yeah, I just found it a bit uh, bizarre. Also, when I tried editing this video on macOS, it kept stuttering. However, I just chucked it all into my Windows install, like my main Windows install, which has all my games and all that. So my gaming laptop, let's say. My Dell G15, which there will be a video about it coming up very, very soon. Just or give me a bit to keep editing that video because it's nowhere near done. It's a big project and a lot of research has to go into it. So like if I just go here and just play it, It, it just stutters. So I decided to chuck this entire project over to my Windows install. That's some of the issues I've noticed. However, there's definitely been more. Um, when I tried putting my USB through disk utility earlier, it wouldn't even detect and be stuck on this loading disk screen. It, it's just really, it's stable, but unstable at the same time. If you know what I mean. But yeah, it's, it's pretty much, it's working fine but it just needs a lot of improvement. Like the launch pad, got my programs. 
installed, uh, like Discord, Bitwarden, OBS, which I'm not using OBS to screen record this because I honestly, for Mac, QuickTime is probably a better screen recorder and it's more optimized. It's more optimized for Mac anyways. However, the one thing I do like about being on Mac OS is that if I, you can like color code the um, folders. I'm just going to make a new folder uh, for video. I'm just going to name it that. You can um, give it a tag. So let's say I want it a blue tag. It will be blue. But if I open up Finder and then I go down to the blue tag, boom, it shows up. Or like the purple tag, which shows up this folder right here. It The tags fold, like feature in Mac OS is actually really useful. And it's so much better than um, like how Windows does it. If you try to use Catalina in 2023, do know that mo some of the programs are starting to lose support for it, such as IQ by Corsair, Logitech G Hub. If you want to get the latest version of those programs, you must go on the latest versions of Mac OS, like Big Sur, Monterey, Ventura. Whatever the latest version of Mac OS is, it will support it. Because Catalina is losing support. And even with OBS, I had to install OBS version 29, which is the like one of the last updates for OBS. Because if you do, uh, if you do 29.1, it, it just doesn't support it. However, most programs do support macOS Catalina still, which is pretty good. Thank you all very much for watching this video. If you happen to enjoy this video and you want to see more, definitely consider subscribing. Anyways, I've been Dan. I'll catch you guys in the next video.